Yo, yo, welcome to Trippy Commentaries. We're looking at the quarterback position in the NFL by breaking down every single team, looking at who they have under center. And, of course, we have made it to the AFC, starting with the Pittsburgh Steelers, a team we've seen pretty successful in the past, but we haven't seen them in the playoffs now for a season or two, so it would be nice to get them back in. We'll see what Big Roethlisberger can do. I'm RJ. Kyle's here along with Justin. Yo. Kyle, what are you looking at with Ben Roethlisberger this year? Can he repeat the success he had in the past? Well, for Pittsburgh fans, I hope so. I mean, it's not all on him either, but the team was was a horrible start last year. Started turning on at the end. Um, They really came around together at the end, but, you know, they they lose Emmanuel Sanders, which is going to hurt him a lot. I mean, obviously, he still has his weapons he can throw to, but... Um, you know, Ben Roethlisberger is one of those quarterbacks. He's going to be competitive every year. Um, he's going to he's going to start getting injured a little more. He's a little older. He's a big guy. That tends to happen, but he's tough enough. He'll play through it. Um, he's got to lim- yeah, he's got to limit the turnovers. That's kind of always been his you know his downside is that sometimes he will fumble. Um, he'll throw that big interception. But mm-hmm. I like Ben, but it, I just I don't know if we're going to see the season that's going to take him through the playoffs this year. Yeah, t- definitely tough as nails. He's got a great receiver in Antonio Brown, and, and it's nice to see him with a really top-notch running back there in Le'Veon Bell. Yeah. Um, if they can get this offensive line uh, stiffened out here, then perhaps we can see Roethlisberger return to his, uh, you know, maybe somewhere close to his prime. He's still got a little bit left in him. Um, still pretty young, believe it or not, even though he's a two-time Super Bowl champion. Um, what do you think out of Roethlisberger this year, Justin? you think he can be a top-10 quarterback, possibly? Uh, that's hard to say. He's been struggling the past few seasons. You know, the team has barely missed the playoff, but they know. Yeah. They're, they're struggling, but the struggles are mostly on defense. Their offense, has, you know, came alive at the end of last season. They yeah. had a nice run. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's up to Tomlin to rally the troops. They really need to get another weapon for him, losing Emmanuel Sanders. Geez, I mean. Yeah, that's right. It's going to be hard to replace. The running backs are solid. The O-line's Decent, but again, the team overall, they, they just can't take the next step to the playoffs yeah. because of the defense. So Roethlisberger, he's going to do fine. And I think we do have to say, now that you mentioned Emmanuel Sanders, I mean, they lose Emmanuel Sanders, they lost Mike Wallace before. Yeah. Yeah. Time for them to get one more receiver in there, I think, uh, just to help out Antonio Brown and Big Ben. Now, the Cleveland Browns have an interesting situation. I think this is certainly a place we can see one of these uh, quarterbacks coming in the draft land. But they seem pretty confident in Brian Hoyer. At least that's what they're saying. Yeah. Uh, the guy has some great receivers, good tight ends, solid number one receiver in Josh Gordon. Um, do you have any faith in Brian Hoyer this year, Justin? Uh, to be honest, you know, I haven't even heard that. I heard his name, but I didn't realize who had been named the starter or whatever. They've been I, pretty I really confident. foresaw them. They, they brought another new coach in, you know, three in the past four years or something crazy. Yeah. Uh, they're they're going to want to draft a, a new quarterback. They're going to want to bring him up in their system. I'm, I'm seeing a Manziel pick here. I really feel, I don't think, think Manziel will fall 7-8. He's going to be in the top three or four picks here. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree with that. They, 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 the fan base needs something to be you know excited about. Yeah. They need to rev up the community to support the team. Uh, it's going to be having to pick somebody like Manziel with a personality. Yeah. I mean, we saw Brian Hoyer look really good last year, yeah, but that was sorry. certainly a small sample size. It was a small sample size, but I think I think – Cleveland likes him. They, a lot of people were talking about him before the season started last year where mm-hmm. they were like, this kid's, you know, for real. Hometown guy. Fortunately gets injured and, you know, that 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 messed up, you know, the rest of his, you know, first season in the NFL. And if he's healthy, I think he's a guy that can compete. I think he's good enough. He's got the weapons. Maybe they go with a guy like Clowney at that spot if he's available to help beef up their defense a little bit. And maybe they go with Sammy Watkins and give him just weapons on top of weapons. Um, the guy throws the ball. He's very accurate. He's he's got good size. I liked what I saw from last year, but like you said, it was a small sample size. But hey, I mean, from that small sample size, all I can say is that I liked what I saw from him. Good point. The Browns seem to be kind of cursed when it comes to quarterbacks. I must yeah. say, you can you, there's not one name quarterback like a Montana or a Favre that you can that you can really think of in the history of the Browns, at least the recent history yeah. of the past two decades yeah. or so. Yeah. Derek Anderson's the last guy I could think of who had a respectable season. That was a long time ago. Let's talk about Andy Dalton for the Cincinnati Bengals, man. What do we say with this guy? He he 
Mm. Certainly gets the team to the playoffs, but uh, I think we talked about the clutch quarterbacks here quite a bit in this discussion in the first two parts. Uh, Kyle, is Andy Dalton clutch? I mean, I don't see it because I haven't seen it so far. Um, I've seen quite the opposite. I, this guy throws way too many interceptions. And he throws those interceptions. And it's, not, it's not even that he always throws a lot of interceptions. But that one or two interceptions they'll throw in that game is when the team needs it the most. They like That is the worst <laughs> absolute yeah, time to throw really an interception. Uh, whether it allows a team to get back in the game or you're already down and you have one possession left and he throws it. I just I don't know. He's losing, you know, he's losing his office coordinator, which uh, I think you know Jay Gruden is a is a very good office coordinator and knows a lot about the quarterback position. Um, so I don't know how that's going to affect him this year. Maybe it helps him. Maybe his Jay Gruden's ideas didn't work for him. But just with all the interceptions and key moments, that's going to haunt him probably forever. Unfortunately. Yeah, I want to see Cincinnati add another weapon. Not so much because they need it, just because they need to make it as easy as possible for Andy Dalton. He's got one of the best receivers in the game, a really good young running back. Is there any way we see just a breakout season from Andy Dalton, Justin? I think it's possible, but like Kyle mentioned, you're missing Jay Gruden. You're missing kind of a, a new age QB guru, yeah. if you will. That's going to hurt him. I, th I see some regression coming up. You have A.J. Green, but when defenses figure out where you're going to go with the ball, that's, that's your first read all the time. Yeah. You know, it's going to be hard to get the ball. Yeah, he really projects his passes, man. He needs to learn to, to really look off the defenders because sometimes, you know, he just throws it over the middle and there's some safety just, you know, waiting for it, just coming right underneath it and taking off with it. And you're like, whoa, what, like, what are you doing? Um, so there's a lot to like with Andy Dalton leading your team to the playoff, you know, playoffs that many consecutive years. It's just you have to get a win. You have to have yeah. some kind, something to you know, validify your efforts. And when you lose in the playoffs every year, it's just yeah. not a good rep to have. He's got all the, he's got all the tangibles to do it, man. He just needs yeah. to, I don't know if it's a mental thing or what, man. But he just he's got to get over that home. Yeah, I mean, we really need to point out with Dalton here that this guy has got a lot in his favor. He's got the best wide receiver you can, one of the best guys you can find outside of Calvin Johnson. He's got, like I said, the good running back that's going to get better, one of the best offensive lines in the entire league, and we all know how good their defense is. So this guy's got a lot going for him. Hopefully he can take advantage of it. I'm not so sure he can. There's just something going on there, something where in the playoffs – that switch kind of turns off. Yep. All right. But uh, in Andy Dalton's favor, he is streaky. So if he gets on a hot streak at the right time, might be his lucky day. Uh, let's talk about Joe Flacco. This guy got a lot of money in the offseason, and mm -hmm. I don't know. Last season didn't look too impressive to me. This is a Super Bowl champion who can make the deep passes, but he certainly needed that epic defense to help him get there. Defense really held out in the uh, in the playoffs there to help out the Ravens get to the Super Bowl, and Flacco took it from there. Yeah. What do you think, Justin? Well, first off, the the coordinator position, it's kind of a revolving door the past few seasons. You had, uh, who'd you have? Caldwell. Cam. Cam Cameron uh, prior Cameron, to that. Yeah. And, uh, and now they have uh, the former coach, Kubiak, yeah. coming Brought in. Brought him that, in. That's just a lot of different uh, lingo and, and system, the way that kind of works. That, that's hard to... to change season to season within a few seasons. That's, that's going to throw off your, your timing with your team. Uh, losing Bolden, that was a huge loss. That's probably what helped them get over the top to, at the Super Bowl. Yeah, that time, yeah. But here's what we can say about Joe Flacco. There's going to be a lot of haters, um, you know, talking about Joe Flacco in the off season. But really, we look at his team all of a sudden, mm -hmm. and ownership helped him out a lot because – you know, they added Steve Smith. That's a wide receiver who really is is it got a great skill set to match up with Flacco. They needed that badly. Mm -hmm. Torrey Smith is still getting better. Yep. Um, Dennis Pittis should be fully healthy. And how yeah. about this pickup? They just grabbed Owen Daniels. And yeah. Owen Daniels, is he's been injured, but he's been great when he's been healthy. And uh, we just talked about Kubiak. Gary Kubiak is certainly... He, you know, he's knowledgeable about what Owen Daniels can do here. Yeah. So that's a lot of weapons for, for Joe Flacco here, Kyle. Flacco, a, a disappointing, the whole offense just had a disappointing season last year. And, True. You know, and you can say it starts with the quarterback. I mean, just inconsistent play. We we saw Joe Flacco, I mean, it just kind of seemed like he wasn't all there. Like, he didn't put in the time and effort in the offseason for the season. He just kind of seemed like, yeah, whatever, you know, I got paid. 
kind of take a season off here. Super kind of Bowl hangover. Like to me. Yes, Super Bowl hangover, just like, eh. You know, and that can happen. I mean, you win a Super Bowl, you got all these appearances you have to do, um, all this stuff you got to do in the off season, uh, and it, that, it does affect you going back into the next season. Plus, you know, you're coming off of the high of winning the Super Bowl. You know, you might be in a good mood for a start of the season, not as hungry as every other team in the league. So yeah. I see him to bounce back. He's a big guy. He's still got, you know, the arm strength. He's still healthy. He's got, like you said, the weapons. I see him to bounce back. That whole offense has got to bounce back, and it's going to be interesting to see what, what, what com- comes of Joe Flacco and the Ravens this year. Sure. Um, Tom Brady, there's not too much we can say about him. I think, in fact, the, the most that we need to say about Tom Brady is that we need to see – this team adds some weapons for the guy. They brought back Edelman, so that's big. Tom Brady obviously likes Edelman, and uh, hopefully uh, big uh, Gronkowski here can get healthy at some point. But Aaron Hernandez, he's not on the football field right now. He's in a small room. Not in the NFL, at least. And um, they, they just need weapons here, that's for sure. Other than that, I mean, he's a fantastic quarterback, one of the best of all time. Well, how long, how long do you think this is going to continue, though? When, when does Brady start his decline? Because last year he looked good. With not having much. Mm-hmm. I think uh, geez, he still looks so good that we're going to see him good for another four or five years. I don't think it's I don't think it's about time to talk about his decline yet. I yeah. don't see it. I mean, maybe a slight decline because he had some ridiculous seasons, some like complete uh, shattering of record, se- of record seasons. But uh, that said, he's still going to be plenty fine. Do you think he can be as good as we've seen in the past without a great number one receiver, though, Justin? Well... He's, he's made it work in the past. He has. Uh, I, I see it working in the future. You keep saying he needs to get the teams need to get weapons. Some some teams make the most of what they've got, and these guys, these no name guys, become weapons, and then that's how they become known to you know NFL fans throughout the, the country. Yeah. Uh, Brady's age is a little bit worrisome to me. He's he's pr- pr- uh, stayed relatively healthy throughout his career. He yeah. had that one mm-hmm. season ending injury. He did. Other than that, he's been straight. So. They might bring in someone. They might draft someone. But I was, you know, the Patriots brought in both both uh, Manziel and Bridgewater for their own private workout meeting session. So, you know, they're looking to the future. So we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. But for the next couple of years, Brady's the mainstay. He is. Now the Jets have an interesting situation here. They they just picked up Michael Vick, and all signs point to him being the starter. But they just drafted Geno Smith here last season. I mean, yeah. what the hell's going on? Does this team know what they're doing? Oh, I mean, look, they drafted Geno Smith because I think they see something in him, but it doesn't mean that he's good enough to be a starter in his first year. Um, I like this pickup for the Jets. I mean, it's, everything's going bad for the Jets, and then this is a great pickup. You got a guy that can come in and start the season off like he did with the Eagles. Um, start the season because that's what Mike Vick's known for. He'll come out the gate. He'll come out hot. Yeah. And then he'll get injured. Get injured, yeah. It happens every season. So I think that's what they're looking at. They're looking at Mike Vick. Let Geno Smith learn a little bit. Let him get some advice from Mike Vick because he's been through it. Um, he kind of understands what it's like to be a, a packet, uh, a pocket passer now. Yeah. And uh, that's what Geno Smith's still He's understanding. He's understand how to read defenses. You know, he's not the smartest quarterbacks when it comes to being able to read the defense, know what's coming, know what changes to make. He needs to pick up on that in order to succeed in the NFL. So, I mean, a good pickup for the Jets to get Mike Vick. Yeah. Do you think Geno Smith... Do you, do you have any faith in him being good? He looked pretty bad last year. I really don't. I mean, the previous picture we just saw was Christian Ponder. I kind of put them in the same <laughs> category. They're Uh-oh. just like they they were overrated coming out of college, and these teams kind of you know take a quarterback hoping that they'll become the next RG three Andrew Luck the guy Russell, the guy Russell, that yeah. you can start in season one. Yep. It just didn't work out. I don't nope. see him. I don't see much upside for him. I don't either. It's a lot of unfair, unfair pressure for these quarterbacks too, man. Cause it is. It's now. It's oh, if we're gonna draft a quarterback, he better start first year, or else we're not gonna do it. It's and that doesn't make any sense to me. You know, not everyone is gonna be able to make that switch yeah. from Takes college time. NFL just like that. Now, along the same lines, K Mac, we got to talk about EJ Manuel for Buffalo. I think he looked a little bit better than Geno Smith, but not too much better. He was injured. Thad Lewis came in and looked almost just as good in, in a lot of these situations. Do yeah. you have any faith in EJ? I don't, just because of what I saw from him at Florida State. I felt he was very inconsistent quarterback at the college level. He yes. was. Um, you know, some games where he just looked terrible. I, I see the same thing, unfortunately, for him in the NFL. Now, we saw some games where he showed some good stuff, and I saw that at Florida State. There'd be some games where, man, he looked really good today. And then all these other games, you're like, well, who is this guy? 
I see the same thing happen. I mean, he did get injured last year. I'm not going to use it as an excuse to why I don't feel that he's you know necessarily ready to start in the NFL yet. Um, maybe after some time, this guy can maybe can become something, but he just needs to learn how to be more consistent and make the right throws. I think it was a reach pick for them to take manual when yeah, they did in that draft. It was. Yeah. That being said, if you're going to stick with this guy, we'll see what the uh, another situation where a new coach comes in and has to decide, do I stick with the guy that the previous administration was high on, or do I go with somebody that I can draft, that I can yeah. train and and you know, skill put put the skill set in that I want them to have. Yeah, like like Webby Smith, man. Exactly, clean, clean the house. EJ Manuel is another example of a guy that needs better weapons. They just traded for Mike Williams. That's not going to cut it. Stevie Johnson apparently might be on the outs. Yep. And these other guys, I mean, they're guys we like. Robert Woods, you know, they're a couple guys that are good here. Right. Good win. No standout guys. Yeah, yeah, they're a bunch of guys, and they need that one standout. All these these best quarterbacks that we're naming. They need that standout. The only guy I could think of who really got away with that one is is Brady, Brady and he yeah. kind of turned. If you look at Edelman's stats, he really turned Edelman, yeah. like like Justin said, turned him into a baller. Yeah. Yeah. So he kind of had one in that form. Last guy we need to talk about in this episode is Senior Ryan Tannehill for the Miami oh boy. Uh, Dolphins down there. This guy, I I don't know what to think. I I was kind of high on him coming out of college yeah. last year. I was still optimistic. This might be the off season where I get off the bandwagon. I don't know what to think about Tane Hill anymore. Really, some of these teams that kind of reach or kind of you know too much hype behind Tannehill and Manuel and Ponder, they could they should have waited a year or two and waited until the twenty fourteen draft because the quarterbacks coming out are you know half of them are going to end up mm-hmm. being starting quarterbacks for a long time or just wait till next yeah. seasons as well. I mean yeah. you can't blame them because you look at the draft before that draft and it was you know pick a quarterback and yeah. they'll start and be good for you and yeah. probably make it to the playoffs. So yeah, they they were victims to that but I I still like Tannehill. I think he showed me some stuff last year especially towards the end of the season. They started clicking, man. Mm-hmm. Him and Mike Wallace, I think they're going to get on a good page. You got Clay there who he likes a lot. You got some weapons there for Miami to to really become a good offense. And uh, I think Tannehill, I, he's got the right. I just he's kind of got a fire behind him. Man. That's what I like. He's a guy that seems like he really wants to compete. Needs to stop throwing interceptions. That's that's, that's kind of a thing a lot of young yeah. quarterbacks will do. I mean, it, that happens. But mm-hmm. he does have that fire. But yeah. he, he was hitting this. Some games he was hitting Mike Wallace, and sometimes it was just like, what are they doing? Are yeah. they on the same page here? Yeah. The Dolphins did pick up No. Sean Moreno. Yeah, that's going to be a big addition to the backfield, along with. Whomever may be there, Lamar Miller, Daniel Thomas. Yeah, um, they can make it work. They have the, the the you know the O line was the big trouble in the media was, yeah. and otherwise with incognito and Martin and all that. We got to give credit to Tannehill. Must have been hard dealing with that offensive right. line. Right, that, that destroys team chemistry when Especially when all that kind of thing goes off in the media and that's the the focal point of your team. And they you know they had a chance at the playoffs there and they squandered it. Mm-hmm. And I think that the pressure became too much for Tannehill. Coming up this season, it's either it's it's do or die for him and the coach, I believe, Joe Philbin. Really, you know, he Philbin. Yeah, this is Philbin's guy. This is the GM's guy. We'll see what happens. They've so. got to be able. To be, they've got to be able to beat the Patriots at least once this year, and they've got to be. <laughs> right. They've got to be able to make the playoffs, and whether it's you know, it's got to be the wild card, or they got to do better than the Patriots, and it's it's not easy to do. But I, I just I like Tannehill. I think he's I think he's a little better than what we've seen from mm-hmm. him so far. Yeah, and I actually have some friends that are really big time uh, Dolphins fans, and they like Tannehill. So I can yeah, kind of over, see why they are positive. In Miami. Yeah, I can see why they are positive about the guy. But uh, like Kyle said, this is the make or break season. Um, yeah, Justin, we yeah. we we can all yeah, Justin mentioned that uh, we we can all like Tannehill, but he's got to make it happen. Uh, Mike Wallace. This is another reason why I'm worried about the guy, just because you know can Mike Wallace have that that big time season this is a guy who's based off of speed yeah so uh they're really gonna have to take advantage of uh, mike wallace's skill set and uh Tannehill looked good at times can he just have a great season this year for the dolphins he needs to figure out how to manage drives because sometimes yeah. it's either hit the big play with wallace or you know hit trying to hit heartline for these little possession receptions and it's just like what are you doing here you gotta you need to run the ball more you need to balance out your offense. There's not, yeah. There wasn't enough balance there last season. Not at all. Hopefully, no Sean Moreno helps that cause because their running backs Certainly. were very disgraceful last year, unfortunately. I was high on Lamar Miller. I was wrong. <laughs> Thank you guys for uh, tuning into this episode where we looked at the AFC North. 
as well as the AFC East. In the next installment, we will finish up the league looking at the AFC West. I believe the Denver Broncos have a decent quarterback. Mm. And the AFC South, Andrew Luck. Mm. Can he get better? We'll talk about it. Thank you guys again for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'm RJ. Justin. Stay tuned. Kyle. Follow us on Twitter. Peace out, guys.